Hi, I'm Patu from FreeFinCal. Today, let's talk about the XIRR annualized return that you may have seen with mutual fund uh, portfolio uh, dashboards. This is known as the extended internal rate of return, or it's a type of annualized return used to uh, find uh, used as a measure of growth when you have multiple investments. When you make only one investment, then you use the standard compounding formula to find the annualized rate of return. That is known as the compounded annualized growth rate or CAGR, some people call it CAGR and so on. Uh, but when you have multiple investments as anybody would have, then you can't use the standard simple compounding formula. You will have to use something known as the uh, extended internal rate of return. So let's do this uh, example and find out what the XIRR actually means. What is it that you are computing when you uh, do the XIRR? Of course, many people will know that you have a standard function in Excel called the XIRR function or in any spreadsheet uh, software, Google Sheets, etc. It's a very standard subroutine called XIRR. You can just call it. And for example, uh, let me show that to you first. So I have here um, some dates of investments and um, prices. These are representative prices of some equity index, typically like the Nifty. And let's say we make an investment of thousand rupees uh, in the year 1st January 2000. So I'll, I'll write it as minus thousand because that's the standard notation for uh, XIRR. So minus thousand. Um, so thousand rupees invested at January 2000. Thousand rupees invested January 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004 and 2005. So that is the uh, investment made. Now let's find out the um, units you obtained corresponding to this investment. So to do that, you have the price and you have the investment made, but you have written a minus there. So I'll put a minus here to cancel that off. Uh, the investment divided by the price of one unit tells you the number of units you've got. So you got 10 units for the first investment, uh, about 8.8 .8 units, 7.5 units and so on for the remaining investment. So that's those are the total units. Uh, uh, for, I mean, units corresponding to each investment. So now let's find the total units. Let's just put a total here. Excuse me. So that's the total units available that you have purchased. Now let's find the value of the uh, investments on 1st January 2006. So if you want to find the value of these investments on 1st January 2006, you will write the total units purchased from 2000 to 2005 multiplied by the price on 1st January 2006. And that is equal to that. So now uh, let's find out the XIRR. So you now have the investments and you have the dates. So it's XIRR is very easy to calculate. So let's write XIRR of now you have to first write the values in the first column the second column is the dates and that's it and that will give you the xir it's 14.8 percent it's 14.82 percent now what is this xir what does this mean actually mean many of us don't understand what this means so let's try to find out now to do this, let's first find out what is the value of the investment that you made on 1st January 2000 as of 1st January 2006. Value as of January 2006. To do that, you have you will do you will take the number of units that's 10 units multiplied by the price on the uh, January 2006, which is this. So that's B8. So let's uh, make that a constant because we're going to multiply that again and again. So that's now. So you invested 1000 rupees on January 2000. In January 2006, that 1000 rupees has grown to 2335 rupees. Similarly, for the other investments, you will have. Obviously, when you sum this value, the total value 
obviously this should be equal to uh, the total value here. So let's take the sum of that. So the sum of all these individual values as on uh, 2006 should be equal to the total value uh, that you computed here, uh, which you uh, multiplied the number of units into the price on January 2006. That's obvious. Now let's take it one step further. Let us now calculate the CAGR of each investment as of, excuse me, caps locks, January 2006. Each individual uh, investment will have a CAGR and let's calculate that. In order to do that, so you need to find out the time elapsed. So what is the number of years that has elapsed? To, to do that, what we will do is, uh, we'll push this to the next column. So we'll find out the years that has elapsed between this and that. So we'll find, we'll say, uh, 1st January 2006 minus the date of investment divided by 365. Of course, this A8 is going to be fixed. So let's fix it. So that's six, a little bit more than six years. Similarly, you have for the other investments. Now let's find out the CAGR. The CAGR will be value divided by the investment. The investment is always 1000 rupees. So let's write that as 1000 rupees. The investment made is 1000 to the power of 1 by the number of years minus 1. This is basically the standard compounding formula for those who, who uh, don't know what it is. The standard compounding formula is given by value is equal to investment into 1 plus return to the power the years. This is the standard compounding formula. Now if I want to find out the return, I will have to write return is equal to value divided by the investment to the power of 1 by return there's a minus, there's a one plus there. So there's a minus, finally, there's a minus. So this is the return. So this is the standard compounding formula. If I invert this to find out the return, I will get this. That's what I've used there. And so that return is given. It's about 15.217%. Now let's take, do the same thing for the other investments as well. Now, notice that none of these individual CAGRs correspond to the actual XIRR. This is the XIRR. This is what we found as the XIRR. None of the individual CAGRs correspond to the XIRR. And if you want to look at it, you can also calculate the average. The average of these numbers is 13.998. That is not equal to 14.82%. So the, the, the XIRR is not the average of the individual CAGRs as well. So what is the XIRR? So to understand that, let's now do a slightly different uh, computation. Let us now assume the CAGR as, I'm going to assume each individual investments as uh, having a CAGR equal to this 14.82%. So I'm just going to copy this down and say, I'm going to assume that in each individual investment has a CAGR of 14.82%. Uh, if I do that, if I assume this is the CAGR, the value, what will be the value? The value will be 1000 into 1 plus this return to the power, the number of years. That will be the value. Please recognize the actual value is 2,335. That is the actual value. If I assume that the CAGR of the first investment is 14.82%, which is the XIRR I've got for the entire investments. If I assume the individual CAGR is 14.82%, then the value I will get 
as of January 2006 will be this. This value will is different from the actual value. So let's write this as the actual value. And I'll write this as value using XIRR. So that's the value using XIRR. It's a different uh, valuation. This is not the correct valuation. Now I'm going to copy this down for the other investments. Now comes the magic. I'm going to, these, none of these values correspond to the actual values. None of them are correct. But I have taken all the investments to compound uh, in a uniform rate given by the CAGR. Uh, the actual CAGR of the individual investments are very different. That's shown here. But I'm assuming all of them are compounding with the same uh, investment rate, which is the XIRR. Now let's come find out the sum of these uh, numbers. Notice that the sum of the final investment value using the same CAGR that is given by the XIRR value using the same value return is the same as the actual value. So this is how the XIRR is computed. The, in, in, to compute the XIRR, what we do is we have to assign the same CAGR to all individual investments such that the sum of their values equal to uh, is equal to the to actual investment value on the date of calculation. That is how the CAGR is computed. So let's try to cal calculate CAGR in a different way. What I'm now going to do is, uh, I'm now I'm going to say, I don't know what the XIRR is. I'm going to set this as 1%. So all of them become 1%. It's some number. Just for the sake of argument, I'm putting 1%. Now, if you see the sum of the values of these individual investment is just 6,200, whereas the sum is much more. The actual uh, value is much more. So what I want to do is I want to use something called the goal seek formula. I will go to data. I'll go to data and I'll go to what if analysis and I'll say goal seek and I'll say set this cell to the value 1009.71107. That's my value I want. That's the actual investment value I want. I want to set uh, this uh, total value to be the actual investment value. And I want to change this number. I want to change this uh, uh, assumed CAGR going to keep changing this assumed CAGR, which is the same for all the investments until this total value equals the actual value. And if I do that, the, C, uh, the goal seek uh, com is now complete and notice now that I've got the actual XIRR value. So that is how the XIRR is computed. So let me say this again. The XIRR corresponds to that annualized return, which if you assume that all the investments grow by the same annualized return, you will get the correct total value. The individual values will be different from the actual individual values, but the total value, the total value will be equal to the actual value. So I hope uh, I've explained this without confusing you. I'm not sure if you have any uh, doubts, uh, please try this again. So please try this exercise at least once with some data. That's how you will understand what how the XIRR is computed. Now, uh, in school, I'm not sure if you remember, when you have done calculus, integration, differentiation, etc., you must have come across a method called newton raphson method. That's a way of, uh, you know, optimization and finding, uh, you know, uh, an optimum value, the minimum value or the maximum value of some given function. So, the uh, whether you use goal seek or whether you use XIRR, it's a subroutine that uses the uh, newton raphson method to find out the uh, the XIRR of a, a portfolio with multiple investments. So please let me know if you have difficulties understanding this video. Bye-bye.